Here we have a very silly example, but it's still a good way to compare and look, sorry, use energy. So we have a spring, we have compressed the spring by a student. We've, we're told how far this spring is compressed. We're told the mass of the student. We're told that there's no friction until the student slides up on this right side. And really that's just because of the curvature on the left side. So finding the normal force and integrating it over those curvatures would be beyond where we're at. The coefficient of friction when we get to this right side, mu sub k they give us, they tell us the angle. We want to know how far up this side, and assuming it's long enough, so this side keeps going. We want to know how far up the incline the student goes. All right, this is somewhat similar to the previous example problem with the um, runaway ramp to help trucks stop if their brakes fail, if you happened to have watched that. This student's gonna have some sort of speed at the bottom of this incline, and then the friction and acceleration of gravity are gonna slow it down, or slow the student down. The beauty of energy, or one of the beauties of energy, is we don't have to break a problem into parts. For example, we do not need to break this problem into the part where the student's in contact with the spring and then going down the hill and then going up the hill. We could. If you remember working with our kinematic equations, we did need to break things into parts because we could only use the kinematic equations during the portion of time when the acceleration was constant. Energy, that is not necessary, which I love that fact. So with energy, this time there is a spring involved. So we do need to consider when the spring itself is stretched or compressed because that's part of the system's energy is the interaction between the student and the spring. There is a change in height. The student goes down the hill and then back up the other side. So we will want to account for gravitational potential energy. During the moments the student is moving, the student will have kinetic energy. And then because of the kinetic friction, as that friction force is acting on the student, as that student slides along the surface, thermal energy will be generated. And we can account for that using the friction force and the distance traveled. Now, there are no, the only other force that is acting on the student at any point between right here when they start, I'm gonna call this our initial moment in time, and right here where they stop at the end, I'm gonna call this our final moment in time. Besides the spring, friction, and gravity, the only other force acting on the student would be a normal force. And again, the normal force is not doing any work, because it is perpendicular to the motion the whole time. So coming back to our conservation of energy equation, we're going to say that work external is zero. Nothing else is causing an exchange of energy. Okay. Let's go ahead and just make this dotted line at the bottom they've drawn in the picture. Let's make that y equals zero. By doing that, over here at this initial moment in time, the student will have gravitational potential energy because the student, let me erase my circle there, the picture shows us the student starts 10 meters above that dotted line. So that will be, that 10 meters will be our, our y initial. But this spring is also compressed at this moment. So 
So there will be this elastic potential energy because we know the spring is going to push the student and get them moving. K, they show us that in the picture. That is the spring constant. S initial is this 50 centimeters that the spring has been compressed. Now technically we could say it was negative since that means we pushed the spring to the left. But in our energy equation, we end up squaring S anyway, so the negative sign will go away. So I tend to just use the magnitude since that's all that ultimately matters. At this initial moment in time, there is no kinetic energy. The student is not moving yet. Of course, as soon as there's a release to let the student go and let the spring push on the student, he'll start to speed up, he or she. So initially, the energy in this system, the student, the student's interaction with the spring and gravity as they slide, all of this total energy is in the form of potential, but both in terms of gravitational and elastic, meaning the spring. This final moment in time over on the right, well, there's going to be gravitational potential energy here as well because the student is going to end up some height above where we are calling y equals zero. There's not going to be any energy in the spring anymore because the student is not connected to the spring. We let the spring push on the student and get them moving but the spring will have just settled at its equilibrium position and stayed settled. At this final moment in time, there will not be kinetic energy either because the student has stopped again. So to write out, oh, I forgot our delta E thermal. So sorry. So in our overall conservation of energy equation, all of this potential energy initially, because there's no kinetic, will end up as potential energy and some thermal energy finally. That's what this is telling us. All of the potential energy that exists in the system initially will end up again partially as potential energy, but partially as thermal energy. So from here, we want to plug in Initially, we're saying mgy initial plus one half ks initial squared. So we're plugging in these individual equations that describe potential energy due to gravity, due to the spring, to write out specifically what we mean in this conservation of energy equation. So finally, we have that gravitational potential energy and then the thermal energy generated will be the friction force multiplied by the distance that force acts over. And that distance d is what we are looking for. All right, so we know mg, we know the mass of the kid, the student, we know y initial, we know k, we know s initial, mg, we don't know why final. Friction force is going to be coefficient of friction times the normal force, which as the student is going up the incline, it's going to be this component of gravity. Our angle of the incline is always between the actual mg force and this y component of gravity, so the mg cosine theta. So our friction force will be the coefficient of friction times mg cosine theta. They've given us mu, we know m, we know theta, so we know this friction force, which means our only unknowns in here are the distance up the incline, which we want, and y final. But that distance up the incline is related to y final because they're part of the same triangle. 
If I draw just a triangle representing the distance along the incline and this y final, we have an opposite side to the 30 degrees and the hypotenuse. So the sine of this angle, 30 specifically, will be y final over d, which means y final will be d sine theta. We need to make that substitution for y final before we can solve because we currently have two unknowns in our conservation of energy equation. So let me go ahead and write that out. MGY initial, 1K, 1 half K S squared, MG, so in place of Y final, I have D sine theta, where theta is our 30 degrees. In place of the friction force, mu MG cosine theta. But again, don't forget D. It's common to forget D. Now, if you looked at, watched the last example problem with the runaway truck, the mass canceled, but it does not in this case. The mass doesn't cancel because of the spring. The energy because of the spring does not depend upon the mass of the student. That's okay, you just can't cancel it. We do need to factor out D on this side though because that's what we are solving for. So D, I'm going to have everything on the left side divided by this stuff in parentheses, which I'm going to factor out MG for simplicity or simplifying plugging numbers into my calculator. So we've got some numbers to plug in for sure, but it was fairly easy to get to this point. I know easy is a, not necessarily the right word, but it was easier than trying to draw a free body diagram while the student's in contact with the spring and then sliding down the left side of the hill and then sliding up the right side of the hill. If we were to look at this problem and try to solve in terms of forces, it would be a lot more involved mathematically. So that word easy that I'm using is just in my mind because of the comparison to what we would need to do in terms of forces. It's still a process to get it set up though for sure. So mass of this student is 100 kilograms, G is 9.8. Y initial is 10. Let's see, that is a very strong spring. So 1 half K S, remember we need everything in SI units. So the compression distance, that 50 centimeters, needs to be squared. Plugging in in the bottom, let's see, our angle's 30 degrees. Our coefficient is 0.15, so this is what I get to plug in. Okay, so 32 meters up the incline. So the distance between entering and exiting the incline in this picture, this is our 32 meters. And we of course are assuming that incline, that slope on the right, is long enough for the student to keep sliding. All right, so I hope you're getting a feel for solving problems using conservation of energy. I'm gonna do one more example, and then we will finish up this chapter.